What does it cost to actually raise sheep? Hmm, a little bit more than you'd think. So I remember being drawn to sheep originally. The advertisement with sheep is that they're easy. All you need is fence, grass, and water, and they'll take care of themselves. But two years later, I'm still finding new ways to be spending money on sheep. So I wanted to share a little bit about really where the costs come in with raising sheep. So what do sheep need? Um, to start off, they need minerals. So a lot of people will go back and forth between the benefits of a mineral block. I usually find a lot of old timers or people at your you know, livestock store will try to sell you a block. I don't like the block. I've heard a lot of people say that uh, depending on how humid it is, the block can be hard to, for the sheep to bite. So I like to go with just uh, loose minerals. Uh, my favorite has got to be Redmond Selenium 90. That's a really good mix for sheep. Very palatable. Sheep love it. They go for it. You can't overindulge on it. It's safe for copper. Um, and then it's got that selenium in it, which is really helpful if you're raising sheep and you want, and you want your ewes to do well when they're making a new lamb, uh, the selenium is really good for them during pregnancy. Even if you're not raising sheep for pregnancy, um, I've got four rams right now. I, I still like that mix. So how much does that cost? Depending on where you find it, it's about 20 to $40 a bag. I think that that's really affordable. The hard thing is finding it. So you can find it online. It's usually a good price, but then think about shipping. What you might want to do is find your local like I don't know tractor supply will do it but usually a lot of the smaller outlets for your feed you go to them and um, a lot of times they'll just order it and it might take a few weeks to get it in but you'll probably save 20 to 30 dollars on shipping because shipping a 50 pound bag of salt costs a lot of money so total cost assuming taking shipping out of it uh, about 20 to 40 bucks. So after minerals, has got to be kelp. Kelp, I feel like, is the missing link. A lot of shepherds aren't doing kelp. What I like about kelp is basically like a multivitamin for your sheep. It's green, so they really go for it. It just has a lot of, you know, dense nutrients in them that maybe they're getting on your soil, maybe they're not getting on your soil. You remember those commercials that would talk about, you know, get your, your vitamins and your minerals. We just talked about minerals. These are the vitamins. So I really like Thorvin's kelp. Thorvin's kelp is probably the most readily available one. It's pricey, 50 to 70 bucks a bag, but it'll last you a very long time. The sheep don't, you know, it's, it's not like it's candy for them. They will eat it free choice. Um, I personally like to just douse it in some of the dry food like if I have to move my sheep to a new pasture and I and I have some dry food to lure them there I'll put some Thorvin's kelp in there but a bag lasts me well over a year same tip if you can't find it online somewhere go to your local store they'll they'll probably be able to order it for you save you on shipping okay just mentioned dry food so so I like to keep dry food on hand for me that's usually alfalfa pellets the sheep really like it. You can always feel good about feeding your sheep alfalfa, at least with Dorper, which is what I raise. They they really like that alfalfa. Um, high protein, really palatable, and it gets them to move. So if you're setting up a new paddock, put the alfalfa out there. So how much does a 50 pound bag of alfalfa cost? It varies. You can buy junk, you can buy high quality. Usually I find that I'm paying between 20 and 25 bucks for a 50 pound bag, and it lasts me a while. Again, I prefer my sheep eating grass than alfalfa pellets, but if I, again, it's a motivator. If I need to get them to move, it's nice to have it on hand. That's my point with all of these. You need all these things on hand. It's not like you're going to wait until you need the alfalfa pellets. You're going to want them on hand. So when you move the sheep next, you, you have them. Okay, electric fences. Um, the electric fence, I think, is a big deal. I really like Premier One for electric fences. I've got links in, uh, in the description for my favorite Premier One fences. Been using them for basically since the beginning and haven't looked back. I really like the, I think it's called the Quick Net. It's just really, I mean, like advertised, it's faster than the other ones. It does get tangled more easily, so you really have to be careful about how you, you know, take it down. But it's $143 for 100 feet. Now, unless you have like two sheep, a 100 foot fence is not gonna do you much good, unless you're moving them like every eight hours. <laughs> which sounds awful. So you're gonna need a lot more than just that one fence, but these are things you should have you should have on hand. So if you have electric fence, you need the electric part of that. So you need an energizer. So I really like, again, from Premier One, the IntelliShock uh, 60, I think is what it's called. It's, it's for 0.6 joules. It, it's pretty powerful. With sheep, you want something that can really pack a punch. I, I wouldn't go for the smallest option, even if you're only gonna use one strand of fence. Um, 
the the fun part with sheep is that they're on grass and if your grass is even a little bit tall and it's hitting the fence it's it's distributing the charge to that grass so you're really going to want a good a good one i bought one loved it so much i have two more okay so a lot of what i've been talking about has been stuff you have to have on hand let's talk about dewormers so even if you have this dream of having the most natural holistic outlook on doing sheep you are going to either have some deaths or you're going to need to deworm again like there's a lot of places to go to for these dewormers dewormer is not cheap especially the good ones it's like yeah you can buy some safeguard from tractor supply for 15 25 bucks that's kind of more like a preventative a real sturdy uh dewormer i'll just name kind of like the big three there's probably others um regionally i think it makes a difference what you deworm with uh the big three you got cydectin valbazine and ivermectin. Each one of those three, depending on the quantities you get, you're probably gonna be spending at least 60 to $100 on each one of those. And a lot of shepherds, they'll alternate their deworming. So they'll um, hit them with one, and then seven days later, hit them with another one. Um, and the reason is what is left over from the first is wiped out by the second. I'm not an expert in this. I, I don't have like, I don't deworm as often as others, but I've also had a lot more losses. Um, but as I understand it, the idea behind that is that you just wipe all the bugs in their system, you wipe all the parasites so that they can't turn into a super bug. Okay, and if you're gonna deworm them, uh, you're gonna need a drench gun. Um, I, I really like this small flock drench gun. It was only, I think, like 10 bucks for me. Um, really good purchase. You can wash it in the dishwasher, um, totally easy. Okay, and then let's talk about just feed and water tubs. Maybe you have these on hand, maybe you don't. Um, if you don't, I mean, these big tubs, uh, the one that I have, I forget what I actually paid for it. I want to say it was about a hundred bucks. I just found it on tractor supply. It's a hundred bucks. Maybe it's 110. I forget on tractor supply. So if you're buying these things brand new, I mean, it's, it's a considerable cost and you'll probably need more than one. Okay. So those are all things that you need to have on hand. And that right there, that, I mean, bare minimum is about $750, $800, all that added up. It could very well um, exceed that depending on the fence you know if you just want to buy a couple more fences that's that's a couple more hundred dollars so um, I could easily see it exceeding a thousand dollars even getting up to fifteen hundred dollars depending on some other things and that's assuming that you already have pasture and a fence and grass and all that stuff but there are plenty of other expenses that that make sheep um, an expensive little hobby so pasture seed, if you, you know, if you're overseeding your pasture, if you either don't have good pasture or you want to enhance it, um, just seed. Seed's not cheap. I know a lot of people with their pasture, they'll throw some annuals out each year to just make it a stronger year next year. I don't love that. I would prefer to spend more money and get perennials. Um, but I have done it. I have tried it. I just found a bigger bang for my buck when I, you know, invest the money in, in perennials. The thing about sheep is if you have a flock, that flock usually gets bigger and you might need more pasture which means more fencing so either that's you know uh the cheaper but more labor intensive electric fences versus you know your permanent fences obviously more fencing that just materials alone isn't cheap um, and that's assuming you're putting it in yourself not hiring somebody you know structures for sheep i don't i'm not a big fan of going overboard with structures you know my sheep don't have a barn but uh, you know they need they need a windbreak. They need some shade. If it's raining, like I like to give them definitely a. Uh, I have this kind of like rickety old tent thing that uh, I made with a tarp and some t posts and some bungee cords. So um, they definitely need they definitely need something. Um, do they need a full barn? Not necessarily. Uh, but that costs money. And when it breaks, it costs money again. We just had uh, a couple weeks ago Hurricane Ian. We got the tail end of that up in North Carolina, and it destroyed probably two or three hundred dollars worth of structures that we used to have and now we don't and uh vet costs oh boy i've gotten this far in the list i haven't covered vet costs I i'll just tell you i've spent over a thousand dollars with the vet you can avoid that when i was in utah i didn't spend a nickel on the vet in north carolina i have spent a lot more which is why if you've been following me you know i've been kind of rearranging my my plans with sheep uh winter feed oh boy uh, that was my number one cost when I was in Utah. Utah's great. There's just, it's dry, so parasites aren't really an issue, but feed definitely is. Luckily, Utah has amazing alfalfa, and I didn't realize how good I had it there. But you have those long uh, winter months, 
and the sheep got to eat during that time. Most of the time your sheep are going to be pregnant during the winter, so you're going to want good feed. So I would I would do alfalfa. Then transportation. Like I don't even have a I don't have a trailer. I've been lucky not having to have it, but you know, if you want to do this more seriously and than me, you'll probably need a trailer for your sheep or a truck or a friend or something like that. That costs money. So can you do this profitably? Of course. Of course you can do it profitably. However, there's definitely some drawbacks with it. Um, there's definitely some expenses that maybe you didn't see coming, but they're a reality. Is it not worth doing sheep? Absolutely not. Like, I love raising sheep. I plan on raising sheep for a very long time. Um, despite all the costs and the setbacks, they're still really enjoyable animals. People that are new to it, like me, that's like, oh, all you need is grass and a fence and you'll be good to go. There's actually more to it than that. So if you're looking to get started with sheep and don't know where to start, I recommend this video. I put this together, did so much research. There's a lot of great photography in there that, that we put in. It's basically the 10 best breeds of, of hair sheep, which make tremendous meat sheep. That's what I got for everyone today. Thanks for stopping by the High Mountain Homestead, and I'll see you on the next video.